So let's have a look at sensory acuity. The basis is that modeling Milton Erickson, the people who became aware of NLP observed that we all make minute changes from moment to moment. And those changes have meaning if you have enough sensory acuity. So the aspects of sensory acuity, the things we're kind of looking for here is their skin color. Now, someone might have a light skin color or a dark skin color. So if they go red, what could that mean? They're in trance. They're in trance. What else could it mean? They're having a hot flush. They're having a hot flush. What else could it mean? Embarrassing. Embarrassing. Angry. Yep. Angry. Angry. Yep. So all you're noticing is them going red. That's all I want you to notice for now. It's like you're just looking for physiological changes, not the meaning behind it, because we don't know about the meaning. We're just looking for the physiological changes. So what, what sort of physio what if someone's goes white? What does that tell you? Shock. Illness, Stand shock, back. scared. Stand back. Stand back, perhaps. Yep. And so all you want to do is just notice the changes in their skin color. Then we have skin tonus. So are they tense in their skin or are they loose? That's what you're looking for, a change in their, in their skin tone. Do they have a symmetrical expression or is there asymmetry? So when you're watching someone, do they have, I'm not sure I can do asymmetry, but just a symmetrical um, expression. So are they smiling in both corners of the mouth or is one corner of the mouth going up and one's going down and you're like, okay, there's a little bit of asymmetry there. Is one of their eyebrows up and one's down? That'd be asymmetry. Is one hand up and one hand's down? That'd be asymmetry. So you're just looking is, am I seeing symmetry or am I seeing asymmetry? Am I seeing like a difference? Is one part, one hemisphere of their body doing something that is different from the other? What does that indicate? Potentially nothing other than a change. Okay. Yeah, so that's when we come back to mind read. I don't know what it means. Okay. What, it, what we can do is we can generalize and say, well, it means a change has taken place. So if someone's gone from symmetrical to asymmetrical, we know something's happened. That's all we want to identify for now. Number 12, breathing. So people have fast breathing or slow breathing. And that's what you're looking for, just the change in that breathing rate. You wanna have the location of the breathing. So is it high in the chest or is it low in the stomach? Number 13, many people don't know this, but your lip size will get fat and plump or thin out. So sometimes people's lips will be really plump and fat and you'll be able to see like the lines in their lips and other times it'll thin out and you won't be able to see any lines in their lips. And just it's a part of the, the physiological transformation that people can go through. Then we have 14, eyes. So people's eyes can be focused or defocused. They can have diluted pupils or they can be not dilated. And so that's what you're looking for. You're just looking for a change in people's body language. Is this making sense so far, yes or no? Yeah. So this is going to help you calibrate on behavior. Now when people have a problem, they have a problem IR. We talked about the structure of reality, I think we've already put it up on the board, have we? No, we did it earlier. So when people have a problem, they have a problem IR, they have a problem focus, which also means they have a problem physiology. So what we're doing here is we really start to look at the physiology of people. What is their physiology telling us? And all we want to look for to begin with is just be aware of their physiology. A lot of people aren't aware. They're listening to the words. They're listening to the words because we're all being trained to listen to the words. The words only mean about 7% of the communication. And we miss out on the physiology that people have. I'll give you a tip if you want to know whether someone doesn't want to talk to you. Do you want to know when, to know when someone doesn't want to talk to you? Yes or no? Yes. Yes. Would that be useful? Yes or no? Yes. You sure? Yes. All right. It's, you want to look at people's feet. So if I was having a conversation with Anthony, and I enjoy having conversations with Anthony, and we can you know, cry about the fact that Collingwood didn't win the grand final recently. But if I had something to do, and I had somewhere to be, as much as I like talking to Anthony, my feet would shift. Now, you guys at the back can't see this, and I don't know how to show you, but if I was to turn my feet away from someone, I might draw it on the board, if you're talking here and their feet are pointed, let's say this is a bird's eye view. This is a bird's eye view, by the way. They've just got long feet. And then this is Anthony and this is Shane. And one, oh, that was a bad foot. 
but then I've got a foot pointed away, that means that I'm actually looking forward to move away from someone. So people's feet will show you more about how they're feeling than their face. My feet Be are actually like that normally. <laughs> oh yeah, well there's always exceptions to the rule. So if you've already got like spread feet, then... Feet, is that what you call them? Yeah, okay. <laughs> then we need to calibrate on that. So we'd be looking for maybe both of your feet would be turned away. So there's always, you need to calibrate on the individual. So it's a really good point because there's not, not everyone's the same. But you'd be looking to go, okay, does that mean that Glennis doesn't like talking to me? Or is that just how she always holds her feet? You'll never know. You'll never know, perhaps. <laughs> is, that, is that using your um, peripheral vision? Yeah, so Hockle... Not, not going on. Yeah, because if I look down at your feet, or where are you going to be looking? You'll be looking at your feet, or you're going to be focused on your feet at least. You know, what's Shane looking at my feet for? Makes you self-conscious. All of a sudden you're like, oh, I'll just bring my feet back in. Now you've been taught to have a poker face with your feet. So most people are trained to have a poker face with your face. Does anyone remember maybe you ate something as a child and you didn't like it, and maybe your parents said, don't make that face. I'll pretend to like it. You've been taught to have a poker face. You know, maybe a teacher said to you, I know you don't like it, but don't make that face and just get on with it. So you've been conditioned. We've, as a society, we're conditioned that if you don't like something, just put on a brave face and do it anyway. What we are conditioned is, hey, by the way, your feet will actually betray what you're trying to do by showing people where you're wanting to head. Your fight or flight response typically manifests into your feet first before any other part of your body. And so when you watch people's feet, it'll tell you a lot more about them. That's just a little tip for you around body language. Is this making sense so far, yes or no? Yes. Yep.